Hey folks, and welcome back to Fireside Farms. Now, if you remember from earlier this year, I started two experiments on my property to see if I could grow food anywhere and everywhere. One was a three sisters plot at one corner of my property, and the second was a squash plot <laughs> at um, in the front of my yard, an, an edible landscaping of sorts. And today, I'm here to update you on both of those. So each spring, I attempt to expand my growing space a little bit more, where, no matter where it is, whether it's in this main garden or somewhere else on my 1.5 acre desert property. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of assistance here in the form of water. We get about eight to nine inches of rain annually. I have no irrigation, so if I wanted to, you know, maintain grass here, I would have to either install sprinkler systems throughout the whole acreage or haul around a hose every single day because the temps in the summertime, springtime, and early fall often get to well above 100 degrees daily. And that makes maintaining and growing new plots of land that I haven't established yet really difficult. So if you remember back to my edible landscaping, I had started a bunch of squash plants indoors at the beginning of this spring season so that I could transplant them out into the front yard. Now, this front yard is full of just gritty sand that has zero nutritional value. When I moved in here a few years ago, I spread wood chips all over that front yard to provide some sort of mulch and coverage. Um, but unfortunately they do not break down as quickly as they would in rainier places because I'm not consistently watering the mulch. So while that area is covered, it does not have very good soil quality. I've spent several years putting in various perennial plants to try and shade out the area, but they are slow growing of course. So this year I decided to do squash, which is sprawling and will cover large swaths of area with green matter that I could then chop and decompose later. And I thought that maybe since that front part of my house is shaded from the westward sun, I would have a little bit better luck with the squash. And to be fair, they lasted a lot longer than my annuals did in that plot last year. But it has not provided me quite the harvest that I thought it would. With the coming of July, temps have been consistently over 100 degrees. I believe we are on our 33rd or 34th day of over 100 degrees with no rainfall this season yet. And it shows. The squash slowly started becoming more and more affected by squash bugs, which were really difficult to maintain because along with all of these squash that I had here in the front yard, I also had my large in-ground and raised bed garden in the back that I also had to pick squash bugs off. So these here in the front yard, although maintained and watered every day, it was just completely exhausting to have to divide my time between three different garden plots. And not to mention, <laughs> the sun beating down on these wood chips, although better than any sort of black mulch, which absorbs the heat, this, it's still too hot. I would have squash leaves burning the, in places where they were directly touching the wood chips and it just became way too difficult a condition for them to thrive here. Uh, sooner or later, they were just barely surviving. They had not given me any fruit this year, and it was honestly almost a waste of my time and a waste of water to be coming out here and just continually watering these plants that were hanging on by a thread and weren't going to produce me anything anyways. Now surprisingly, there is a silver lining, and one thing that keeps me coming out here to water, and that is various watermelon plants that I've got. I have one here and two on this side, which, I mean, the watermelons don't look great, but they're alive. <laughs> and those few fruits are what has given me the strength and wherewithal to come up here and still drag a hose all the way to the front yard and water these few watermelon plants. Of course, I do have perennials up here that I have to water consistently, but I do not have to water those every single morning in this heat. Speaking of heat, it's about 110 degrees in this garden right now. So unfortunately there will not be a squash harvest from my front yard edible landscaping this year, which I'm not too disappointed about. Honestly, I have way too much squash coming in from the regular garden. I don't know if I could have handled any more squash. <laughs> 
but it was a learning experience. It did inform me of certain plants that did better than others, such as the yellow crookneck squash. It's fared much better than like the delicata that I planted, the tromboncito that I planted. And as I progress over the years, I'm not expecting to know everything in one year. It's already been three and I barely know anything about this property, but I am learning slowly and surely what does better where and what can survive these temperatures and this heat and this poor soil and how to best grow what is going to thrive here on this property. Now the in-ground garden, the three sisters that I didn't mean to plant as a three sisters garden on the side of my property, was something that I thought was actually gonna work out, but it didn't. Now I had planted a smattering of beans, corn, and squashes. The squashes that I planted were a mixture of open pollinated types as well as the corn. Both types of seeds I got from goingtoseed.org. I will link that video either above or below. Very cool website you should check out about land race gardening. The beans that I planted were my own saved seeds from a California black eye number five, cowpea. They did very, very well for me in the in-ground garden last year. And since I'd saved my own seeds, I really wanted to see if they would be a little bit better in the desert heat because they've already grown here once. So I tilled a small plot of land. I added very few amendments such as peat moss and maybe a little bit of soil that I had left over just to give it more than just sand to grow in. I then covered the whole area with shade cloth and put holes in the shade cloth so that the plants wouldn't be competing with weeds. And for a while, that area was doing really well. I was watering it every morning, which is tiresome, but I was seeing a ton of growth from all of the plants in that area. But I think I know what went wrong. <laughs> First of all, the shade cloth that I purchased, I don't remember where it was because it was an old roll that I had in, in the barn, but it ended up just falling apart into smithereens, which allowed all of this light to get in and then weeds started coming up through every single inch of that thing. And it was super difficult to control them because if I tried to pull weeds from underneath that shade cloth, I would just make bigger holes. So once the weeds started getting too bad, I was just trying to mitigate between watering the weeds too much and giving my crops enough water. Secondly, I didn't plow the area very well. Um, when I did till it, I did it with a just a little hand tiller that I have and I didn't pay enough attention to the grade of the the land because it ended up being where the north end of the plot was higher than the south end so the plants on the south end would obviously get the runoff of the water and then I would have a ton of water leaching from the north end and assuming with it was soil and nutrients so I had poor germination and just poor health of the plants on that north side of the bed versus the southern side. And then came the squash bugs, <laughs> which I've already explained. It was really difficult to have three different areas of squash on my 1.5 acre property to try and get rid of squash bugs. I do hand picking because I'm an organic gardener, so I don't use any sprays or any sort of chemicals on my garden. So hand picking for several hours a week, three different places was extremely exhausting. And of course there's gonna be bugs you miss. There are going to be days you don't go out there because you're too tired or, or overwhelmed. And that's fine, that is totally okay. But the one thing I learned was that if I'm going to have squash, I should probably keep it all in one place because it's far less work to do it all in one place than in three separate places. <laughs> I thought for some reason that maybe if I had squash up at the front and then the side of my property and then here in the garden that they wouldn't find the squash in one of those places. They found it in all of the places. They were everywhere, everywhere. And unfortunately with the heat and not, neither my front yard or the side yard garden plot having shade cloth over them, which is extremely important in my environment, they just weren't producing anything. They were producing very few flowers. I did have bees in my front yard and my side yard garden that I saw. So I know pollination was occurring, but I didn't get one single fruit off of any of my squash plants, my bean plants, or and my corn tasseled a little bit, but it was so short and stunted that I just got tired. <laughs> 
and that is okay. I got completely overwhelmed with three different garden plots on this property over this summer, and I'm sure that the heat <laughs> does nothing to help it because it's so hard to get out here every day and water by hand for more than an hour when it's 90 degrees by 9 a.m. And that's not me whining. I have lived in this environment for a very long time. But this was the first year that I did these experiments of how much land can I grow in so many different places and I'm starting to reevaluate whether I want to spread myself thin over such a large area again. So a majority of my time went to this beautiful garden. And focusing mostly on my main garden is what kept the food coming in. I didn't spread myself thin so that I couldn't take care of my primary food source, which is this garden. Not to mention the shade cloth under this garden makes it way more manageable to work out here in the middle of the day. But all this to say, garden overwhelm is very, very real. And although I would not have given up on those either of those garden plots if they were producing something, I find no harm in letting go of something that's not doing anything for you. Now, I was just wasting time, essentially, watering these plants in both the front yard and the side yard that weren't producing me anything and it was causing me stress and time lost during the day and just general malaise as I sat out in the sun and fretted over these plants that were probably not going to come to fruition and so I let them go. I stopped watering them and I've learned from my mistakes and Front yard garden probably will not be cultivated with any plants this winter, but I am definitely thinking about how to do this side garden differently next year. And it's going to start with a different type of wheat barrier because <laughs> this one was worthless. So that's what happened to my two other garden plots this year. Of course, you guys know all about this garden. I've kept you well apprised with garden tours and other videos but I felt the need to let you know what happened to the rest of it. And I hope, I do not want to encourage you to give up on anything, but I do want to encourage you to feel okay in letting go of something that isn't benefiting you. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll catch you on the next one.